Hey everybody, this is Ben and welcome to another Timber and Stone tutorial video. I am recording this tutorial in the 1.7 test build, so definitely pardon any debug messages or glitches that may appear. This is not a final version, but I wanted to make sure I'm covering any small changes to the interface, uh, just so there's not inaccurate information out there with the 1.7 release fairly close ahead of us. So this tutorial, I'm going to be covering villager management, kind of in a general overview sort of, of role. Uh, I want to I wanna cover the different windows that you can use to control them and just basically where all the information is that you're going to need to to effectively manage your villagers. Now, one thing I see, it looks like we have a goblin popping up here. Appears to be in good health. Good for you, goblin. Um, so... When you've got your villagers, when you you're, the most basic way of controlling them is you click with a normal click on one of your villagers to select them. You would normal click anywhere else, just on the ground, to deselect them. If you have them selected and right click, you are able to micromanage them and they will walk around. Now I think we're gonna see this goblin get uh, owned by our wood chopper here, Lewis. He's got an axe. That's a pretty good weapon. And the goblin says, "I'm out of here." And he's gonna chase him down though. Yep, that goblin does not want any part of that wood chopper. But he'll take care of him on his own, pretty much. Um, at the beginning, at least. Once your village grows, the enemies will get much more difficult. And you can see now, uh, what do we got here? William is going off to help. They will, they will hunt him down. So, to manage your villagers, you would click on someone, and you can see down here, you have a number of buttons. Uh, the first, you can click on each of these to bring up a page of the villager window. And... The same buttons appear on the left edge of the window along here. This is just your general information, the the first button. The second one is the profession. The third one is equipment and inventory, as well as the, you can control what amount of encumbrance you want them to have a, a goal of maintaining, or a maximum, rather, than a goal. Uh, if they, they don't hit that, do that exactly, like they, this person very likely, uh, Claudia here, could very likely go to something like 12.6 or so like that, depending on what they pick up. But once they get near or exceed their encumbrance, they will look for some way to unload what they're carrying. Um, and the encumbrance does have a direct impact on their walking speed. Uh, the fourth tab is settings. This is where you're going to have... Um, setting specific to the profession that that villager currently has and then also kind of more general settings here like notifications uh you can tell them you know when there's a tool breaks do you want a notification to pop up in the lower left here uh do you want to know when they collect resources do you want to know when they craft something like all that they are generally unchecked by default and then also is this there's the sleep control down below uh very simply you can leave them to sleep autonomously and when they get tired they'll just go and sleep or uh, oh, sorry, and bef before I go into scheduled, uh, you can tell them when they need to sleep. So, like, I can say, don't go to sleep until you're exhausted, and then wake up when you are just slightly rested. And so they'll sleep pretty much, so now Claudia here will sleep about the minimum that she possibly requires. So that when she's absolutely exhausted, um, she'll go to sleep, and when she's just somewhat rested, not even very well, she'll get back up. Now... I don't know if that necessarily maximizes the amount of work they're able to do in a wake sleep period, however. I often will opt for a sleep when winded and a wake when energetic, which probably results in a very similar amount of time spent working. Now, this fatigue level, you can see here on the first information panel, fatigue right here. So varying levels, I don't know exact points on this bar that correspond to each of the fatigue levels like winded fatigue exhausted but you can generally get an idea that this is like one third two thirds and pretty much full fatigue and this is again like two thirds fatigue one third fatigued and this would be completely rested fatigue bar completely empty so you can kind of guesstimate about you know how long they'll sleep but of course that's sleep the, the amount that they need to sleep depends on the quality of the sleep which is entirely dependent upon the bed that they're sleeping in. At the beginning, they're going to sleep on the dirt, so they're not going to rest very quickly. One quick thing before I continue, that I'm switching back and forth. Each of these tabs corresponds to the F1 through F4 keys, so that makes for much quicker navigation. Um, scheduled sleep, very similar, but you set the actual periods of the day. You check, like, okay, sleep during afternoon. 
you actually check the periods. And this is useful, especially for me, um, if you want to have people mostly sleep at night because it gets really dark. Or if you say you have two people who are carpenters, you might want to set one to say, oh, you sleep like dusk, evening, night. And then the other carpenter, you would have sleep midnight, late night, and dawn. So that their sleep schedules, they're staggered. So you always have a carpenter available to do work if needed. That would be a useful way to go about that. I don't generally spend too much time scheduling that kind of thing, though. So let's go back. On the information panel here, you see you got a picture of your villager. You have their health. Hopefully that's full. The morale, that does not impact too terribly much right now, but it can go down, especially if there's any of these other things that are wrong. Uh, the fatigue level, which I talked about, and the hunger level, which is, tells them when they need to eat. When this fills up a little ways, then they'll start to seek out food, or if they're nearby food, they kind of grab it just about any time. And then the level two here, this is the level of their current profession. You can see this will gradually fill up as Claudia here mines more stone. And so she's a level two miner and she's a level two and, you know, just over one third coming up on one half of the way to level three. If you look at her profession tab, you can see that she's a miner level two and all of these different professions, the levels work separately. So if, if you switch from, I switch her from a miner to, uh, let's see, how about blacksmith? There you go. Now, if I come back here, uh, this is her blacksmith stats. This level one, she's again, about a third of the way to level two on a blacksmith. If I come back and switch her back to a miner, her level, her, her experience level is exactly the same. It maintains that switching back and forth. You don't lose this, at least in the current build, switching professions back and forth. There's too much switching that you need to do, especially early on, to actually run a successful village. Third tab, equipment. This will show you what they have. They have two hands. They have a helmet, chest, and legs. Uh, you can have them armor up or they will often pick uh, no pun intended pick the tool that they need to do their current job all on their own or you have the handy maintain an inventory button here so claudia here for example she will go out and dig but when it's time to eat or go to sleep she will unload her pick put it away in the wagon and then get some food and eat you might think it's more beneficial if she doesn't keep putting that thing down because that all she's going to do is mine so you would come into the maintain an inventory Click that button, and it pops up what you want to maintain. So I would say go ahead and maintain one pickaxe. You don't often specify more, but you could say to have her carry food around so she doesn't always have to run all the way back to the wagon or a food barrel to get food. Uh, it's often you want to maintain certainly more than one arrow if you have an archer, um, and then you can specify each type of armor as well. Uh, she's, and it tells you right here, currently maintaining pick. And then this is their inventory. See that she's Claudia's carrying, oh, 14 stone, my forager. You saw that that pulse of that's uh, debug pathing. Someone can't get to the wagon. Thank you. Yes. There are some slight, whoops, some slight bugs currently. There you guys go. Get out of the way. Don't don't hog the wagon. All right, Claudia. Where's my dear Claudia? Since I'm looking for Claudia, I will talk about some other controls here. One way, this is this is the, the kind of the main way, I guess I'll start with, to switch between your villagers is the square bracket keys. These are to the right of the letter P. Top row, far right, square bracket. So if I hit either of them, it will cycle through my villagers. Oh, there's Claudia already, but I can cycle through all of them. And one handy thing that you can do, you can bring up the info screen and you can still use these square brackets to cycle through. So if I want to check, like, is anybody hurt? Check their health. Oh, look at that. Lewis got a little bit hurt in his fight with that goblin. Everyone else looks like they're good. So I can just cycle right through this and it'll go round and round. Very handy when you want to do a quick check. Um, it used to be the way that you would go through looking for a profession, uh, someone who is a particularly high level in a profession. However, now I'm going to get to probably the meatiest and most useful portion of the whole of the Timber and Stone interface for managing your villagers. That is the unit list. You simply press the U, the letter U as in unit key on the keyboard, and up pops the unit list. Now this will 
expand and it have a scroll bar appear as you gain more villagers. But here it very simply lists the name of all of your villagers and all of the professions that they can possibly be. And then in the grid is the level they are for each of those professions. And you can click on a profession to sort by the level of that profession. So I can very quickly click on blacksmith and sort that's ascending and it, there's descending. So very quickly I can see, okay, I have two people who are level three blacksmiths, Zachary and Paisley. Very easy to pick. So if I want a stonemason, bingo, William, he's a level three stonemason, already a stonemason, so that's good. I picked the right guy. But yeah, it's very easy to assign people a profession, to switch professions around to keep your village working well. I can see right here, Celeste is an excellent herder. Why do I not have Celeste as a herder? I'm insane, apparently. Jeez, especially, do I have a farm? I have a level five farmer. All right, so that's not so bad. And then on the far right, you can see there's a jump. It says jump next to everybody. And that doesn't make them jump into the air, although that would be hilarious and cute. But no, that, that means you just want to literally jump to the person and they are selected so that you can find out what they're doing. Um, he's telling me what's wrong. He can't collect wild grass. Sorry, man. Uh, so don't harvest wild wheat then. There we go. So you can see he was selected. I hit F4 to bring up his settings page. And right away, I got exactly to the control I need. Um, one, one quirk of timber and stone, by the way, uh, you can use the F keys that will open and close this window or to exit almost all windows. You can either click the X in the corner, which is obvious, or hit tab by default. I believe that one is rebindable if you would so wish though. And that mainly covers villager management. There are some other things that are specific to professions. Uh, let me just see. Bring up my unit list, for example. Uh, so I have a stonemason. So let's go check out William the stonemason here. If I bring up his settings page, the gear and wrench, or hit F4, uh, you can see he was level 4 because I said right here, train under level 3. That's a very useful setting to check right at the beginning of the game. If you want to have someone be either a blacksmith, a carpenter, or a stonemason, and I think perhaps the engineer may have that option as well um yeah blacksmith carpenter possibly engineer let me actually just switch someone to engineer i'll check um yes indeed the engineer i was correct on that um and the stonemason uh there may actually you know what i think there might be some other more obscure professions that have that option as well but you should check right away if they have the option to train under level three because that's gonna right away you're not gonna waste time on your villager being low level and I don't want you to actually be an engineer, Claudia. You go back to being a miner. You don't look good with the beard. And with that, I will say thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you're enjoying my timber and stone videos. Um, I'm still looking forward. Oh, somebody's trying to... Searching for something. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to the 1.7 release. And I do hope it's going to come out soon. The testers group is working really hard on ironing out the bugs, trying to get it to be stable and not have any you know weird glitches that are going to frustrate people as they play so i stay tuned i will keep updating as i hear news on the 1.7 release and i'm going to be coming out with a couple of more tutorial videos on some other specific areas of gameplay i have to plan those out a little bit so it'll be a few days thanks everybody for watching and i will see you in the next video